There you go. All right. Thanks, Jen. Hi, everyone. Um, first, first session of uh, our P6 training chalk talk here. Um, just a quick overview. We're just going to go over real basic information today. So this is going to be just kind of getting some definitions made up, um, understanding how you create the project through the wizard and P6 and uh, creating a work breakdown schedule uh, and kind of going through the real basic starting of a project schedule. Uh, so we'll jump right into some of the definitions here. I'll start sharing my screen. Okay, uh, everyone can see that kind of a quick glimpse, glimpse of the definitions that uh, are kind of critical to this point of the project. So the first thing is going to be your uh, EPS or your enterprise project structure. This is going to be where you guys store your projects once we get into uh, P6 itself. Um, from there, we're going to start with creating what we call a WBS or a work breakdown structure. That's going to be the real grand picture, the, the big buckets of um, items that, that the, the are going to have the durations, the activities inside them. So this is really the most important step is to make sure we have this WBS structure set up properly. Um, from there, it, it's just a matter of building your schedule. So you have your durations, which uh, represented in days is how long a certain activity takes. Uh, your activity ID is going to be unique numbering that P6 generates once you start inputting and adding activities. Um, your activity names. That's something that the user is going to do, or us as a PM, superintendent, uh, assistant project manager, project engineer. So this is going to be like your foundations, your rebar installation. We'll, we'll assign durations to those items. Um, from there, we're going to get into actually linking activities and assigning predecessors and successors and kind of really starting to build the schedule and, and make it unique to the project that we're working on. Um, so your relationship, I, I grabbed a small picture here just so we can all kind of understand what we're getting into. So your relationship is, is typically your link between your, your activities or your predecessors, successors. Um, this arrow represents that link, your relationship. Um, this is what we call a finish to start. Uh, it's when your activity has a start date and a finish date. Your start date will be here, your finish date will be here, and that represents the overall duration of an item. Um, so your predecessor is what establishes more or less your finish to an activity uh, once it's linked. And then your successor will be the activity that directly after your predecessor. So this establishes your finish and then your start date. Uh, so that's kind of just some of the major um, definitions I want to go over for this first chalk talk with everyone. So we kind of all have an understanding of um, what we're looking at. So without further ado, uh, what we'll do is I'll jump over to P6 uh, and start that process with everyone here. So on my screen, uh, you'll see down here, I have an icon it's called P6. That's what the program is. Uh, once you start that program, here's your, your username, your login information. Uh, if you do not have a username login, uh, send myself, send me an email and copy John O'Boy IT. We guys, we can get you hooked up with a login and a password. And you may have to come in so that he can um, put the actual program on your computer so that you can work on it. So first thing you'll do once we've established that, we'll go ahead and sign in. And when you guys sign in, this will be the basic screen you'll see. Uh, this is where really you start uh, creating the project. And in P6, they created a wizard to help you just create the project. It kind of keeps things real simple and easy to do. So there's two ways you can start the project up. You can come over to File, and you can click New right here. Or in the left-hand ribbon, uh, I should just see a blue screen. That's all oh, I you're see. still on the blue screen? Okay. Well, now yeah. let's see. Thanks, guys. Let's go back. All right. Do you see the P6 screen now? 
Blue screen. Or just blue. Still blue, huh? All right. Wonder why that is. It's slowly turning red in some people's eyes, though. <laughs> Oh, I see what I did. All right, how about now? Can we all see the P6 screen? Got it. Got there it. it is. Yep. All right, let me let me real quick go back to it. All right, so once you're here, come down, you'll see a, a P6 icon. Click on that. It'll generate the login screen from your login screen. Uh, once we create the username, if you don't have one already, uh, John will create the password for you. So we'll connect, let it load up. And then typically what we'll see is just this blank screen. Um, from here is where you're gonna create the project itself. So there's two spots you can create it. First, you can come up to the file up here, you can go new, or you can come over to the left-hand ribbon and there's this icon here that says new also. So once you do that, it'll create what they call a wizard. Um, this is where you're gonna create the project from scratch. So as we mentioned before, your EPS, that's gonna be unique username. So once you go into it, you click the three dots, you'll see that these are the, the current users and folders that we have for P6. So it's mostly the project manager, superintendent, assistant, uh, assistant project managers. So for this lesson, I'll click myself, it'll be dropped in, and you hit the next button. This is where you name your project. So this is gonna be the project that the name that's gonna be carried through um, as you start creating the, the more meat of the, the project itself. So for this purpose, we'll say training one, and then project name will be, let's go chalk talk. This project ID is, is uh, the hardest to change once we start. Once you start actually building your schedule, they kind of lock this project ID number in. So you want to make sure that this is the, the first spot where you would catch yourself if something was wrong or if you want a different name on it. So we'll hit next. It'll come up with the project plan start. We'll get into that in a couple minutes here. But right now, you're just going to use it as the, the date you created the schedule. So it's just simply hit next. Uh, there's no benefit for you guys in this responsible manager. So you'll just leave that as is. Next, um, assignment rate types. This is something that you're not gonna, you're gonna, not gonna need right now, uh, but this is when you start really cost loading the schedule and um, getting into more of the accounting and, and cash flow process. So for this purpose, uh, we're gonna hit next. And then that's it. Congratulations, you created your project. Finish. And so what will that do? It won't bring up your project just yet. What it'll do is it'll put you into that EPS and it'll have a project created. So there's two ways you can go ahead and access at this point. You can over here, you can hit open. And what that'll do is bring up the screen that had everybody's um, past projects. So all your EPSs, so you'll come down to where you guys assigned it. You'll find the project that you created right here. And then you can go to open. Um, real quick, let me show you the, the second path. And the, this is the path that I, I kind of recommend everyone to use. So over in your left-hand side, you'll see this icon here, which is projects. And what that'll do is it'll bring up a more detailed screen of the, the same EPS screens that we've been looking at. So all the users are here. You'll come down to your project that you just created. And there's a couple tabs that I want everyone to pay attention to in here. Uh, first one is your general tab. That's where this is kind of, uh, you can change your project ID. If you wanna recreate that project name, you can change it here and here. So this is the two boxes that mean the most in this tab for you. Now there's all these tabs across here and we'll get later on in different chalk talks and what these are. But for purposes of today, the other one I wanna pay attention to is your dates tab. Uh, your dates tab is gonna have your finish and start date and date of dates. So your project plan start is when you're going to be starting this project. So the first day of construction mobilization. Um, this date is important just because this is what's really going to kickstart your project. And this is the date that we're going to 
plan our and create the baseline around. So once that's done, and again, I believe we're going to get that into uh, the chalk talk two or three. We're going to baseline these projects. Then you have your data date. This data date is used after you create your baseline. This is going to be the update date. So in every month, you may want an update. So you'll use this date as next month when you want to update. So you'll be able to update that. And what that'll do is you'll leave your project plan start where it is because that's our our hard start and what we'll do is it'll say okay a month later these activities should be done and you can do certain uh, um, functions in here to, to show where progress is made and and uh, where we may need to um, pick up the pace or where we have time and creative flow and finally is your your finish by this finish by is typically once we receive the RFP or bid solicitation, if the bid comes with a hard stop date, that's where you're gonna to wanna to put this must finish by because what that'll do is P6 will recognize that as a must finish by. And if you go over that date, uh, it forms your critical path because you'll, you'll be in essence uh, behind schedule. So it'll establish that date for you and then lead you to making sure you're hitting that date. So once those two tabs are, are reviewed and you're comfortable with it, we're gonna come up here to your project. It'll be highlighted already because it's specific to the project. Uh, you'll right click and hit open project. That'll bring you to this screen. And again, nothing has been created yet because we're still in the process of making the schedule. Up here, you'll see, this is the tab we just opened up, activities, and you can scroll back and forth between projects, which we were just in, and activities, which we just opened. Um, so the first thing, the most important thing to do here is start with your WBS breakdown. Uh, so you'll come over to the left ribbon. You'll see this icon here. It'll show up as WBS. You wanna open that activity window. And here's where we're really gonna start building our schedule. So your WBSs are gonna be represented as your phases during construction or during the entire construction process. Um, so for, for ease of this one, what we'll do is we'll keep it real simple uh, and we'll start adding our WBSs. Now, adding your WBSs, you'll come over to the right-hand screen, you'll see this ribbon. Uh, this is where you're going to spend most time adding your activities. So once we hit add, that'll create a, another bucket, if you will, of places to start putting your activities in. Um, so be careful in this spot because what we'll do is we'll call this your bid phase. So then it'll leave training 001, which is your name, it'll go bid, and then you can change the name over here and we'll create this, say, um, bid assembly. Okay. Now we'll add more activities underneath these WBSs in the next screen, but I just wanna show you what we have to do to set these up. So these are gonna be the main flow of the entire project. And so you're gonna hit add, and this is what I, I wanna bring to your attention. Right now, when you hit add, the next bucket will be under the bid phase. And that's not where necessarily you want it at this point. Um, and how you change that is back over on your right hand side, you'll see down here there's four arrows uh, and this will manipulate where your next WBS lands in the scope of uh, creating the overall project here. So what you wanna do is you wanna come over, hit the left arrow and what that does is it takes it and moves it from inside this WBS to inside the entire W uh, uh, construction. So now, you've gotten the next phases of the process. Uh, so let's call this one, let's call this one by. So this is where we're going to uh, do buyout and contracts. So, it, and, and it's gonna, to me, it should be a generic flow. It's always gonna have a bid process. You're always gonna have your buyout process. Um, We'll go ahead and create a couple more here. And as you can see, they'll just keep in the tree format. So you just wanna make sure that 
anytime you create, you're going to take those WBSs and make sure they all fall in that main project. So we'll go from here, we'll go submittals. Ginger submittals. Let's fix the spelling later. And then let's do procurement. And you guys can make these any names you want. Um, there's no standard to that. It's how you, it fits your project. Design build projects may have a totally different layout uh, than what your typical lump sum or hard bid projects may have, um, or your, your GMP projects. The only other, the, the last step here, we'll call it construction. Construction, construction. And now this is the only item that for this practice, we're gonna not, uh, when we add a WBS, we are not going to move it left or right. Um, so once we add this in your construction, now this is where it really becomes unique to your project. So if you have site work, uh, it's going to go into the flow of construction and how you guys are going to build your uh, actual construction process. So this is where you're going to really start paying attention to uh, your drawings, making sure you're building the schedule in the same sequence that you're actually going to be doing on site. So you have site work, site work, and then from here, you're gonna add, again, you wanna move over one, so that stays underneath this WBS. You go here, you say foundations, here, foundations. Okay, for ease of this process, but it, it, it just continues on. Um, so then you can say, have your, structural steel and then from there you can put in your exterior facade and you're going to keep creating those buckets because when we get into the next phase of it and we're adding activities that's when you're really going to break down the process uh, so once you have your wbs structure assembled you can come over to your activities Hold on a second, just something happened here all the time. There we go. So as you can see, this is the same process that we just set it up. So here's our, our steps, our WBSs, and what they do is they make them bolder and more colors that are identified as your process. These can only be changed from your WBS. And once you start activities and you start linking, I'm gonna advise you not to change your WBSs because it will screw up your schedule. Um, you can look at these as buckets of, and, and when we get to the point of adding our activities, it's the same process. You're going to come over to your add button. And now we're going to start building more details inside these bigger buckets. So for this instance, I'll add a couple because I know we're going to have several steps in this phase. Um, this is your activity ID. This is the, as I said in definitions, this is where you're automatically getting generated from P6. And then you have your new activities. This is where we're gonna start filling in the activity specific to the WBS. So uh, first one is uh, we're gonna receive the RFP, let's say. And you wanna go down and you wanna identify all of your activities first. So then let's say bid period. And from there, let's go to uh, let's make it a, a subs bids due. Okay, give us time for bid review. And then bid submission. And again, this can be, these, these are just my generic way of doing it right now. These will be specific to your actual project and how you want to build the schedule itself. And then finally, uh, let's say award. Okay, from there, once you've established your activities, you're going to come into your durations. This is, like I said, the amount of time you're allowing for the single activity to take place. So this RFP is when we receive it, so we received it one day. So your duration for that is just one day, and that kickstarts your project. This is where your start is going to be to everything. 
um, for our bid period. This is where we go out to bid. Let's say we allow our subs 30 days to bid this, okay? And then one day for bid submission, that's when we get all of our subs due. Let's say we allow three days to review the subs bids to make sure everything's covered. We're putting together our final proposal, which is a one day duration, it's the day we submit on. And finally a one day award. And that's when the contract, typically this may not be one day. Let's say this is a 10 day because the owner's reviewing what we've given them as a, as a process. So we go through this process, we win the bid, that's where we establish when our construction or our contract and buyout contract phase is going to start. Um, now, keep in mind, that's just, again, the flow of this. The way we've been doing it lately is we're actually going to be buying out contracts during our bid phase to kind of get our best and last during the bid phase to expedite our buyouts and contracts. So it's just a matter of going through the entire process now. So you're going to go to your buyouts, you're going to establish your major contracts for us and we'll just be adding those contracts in. So let's say you have HVAC, HVAC, let's say site work here, let's say foundations. Okay, so one thing I want to show you guys, now I did this on purpose, so typically, Sometimes you'll buy this in a sequence of construction. So you know your site work guy is going to be on site first time. And, and say you had HVAC up here and you started linking everything and you want to rename or, or move this HVAC activity down further in, in the sequence of events here. So what you'll do is you'll come over to uh, the activity ID cell and these can be changed. So you'll look to say, okay, I want this under foundations. So as you see, it's a A1080 for your foundations. So you just wanna do the next sequential number. So 1081. And what that'll do is that'll move you down and put you back in the sequencing that you want. And on a lighter chalk talk, I'll, I'll go through the process of actually renaming all of your activities so that it makes sense for the flow. Um, so you'll continue down, you'll grab your important submittals, You'll grab your critical procurement items. So your long lead items will be established here. And then finally, you're gonna get into your construction. And you'll see in your construction, this is where we set up separate buckets inside that, which will be unique to your project. Um, so it's the same process. You're gonna come back over, you'll highlight where you want your next activity to land. You'll then come over to your add button up in the right hand corner. You'll add, add, add and then you just start inputting the activities. So it's always the same process. You always wanna create your WBS, then you wanna come in, add your activities, identify your activities, identify your durations, and then you can schedule the projects. Well, then you'll link and then you'll schedule. So for the ease of this uh, and, and kind of keeping pace here, let's say site work. So the first thing we're gonna do is, uh, let's say grub. So we're gonna come in, we're gonna move topsoils and really begin getting into the site work. Actually take that back. Mobilization should always be your first step for any of these, which will identify your start time. Um, give yourself a couple days for mobilization because it's the practice is you create the activity, you create your duration. And then we'll start grubbing. Okay. And, and you might not have a site work activity. So that's why this construction is unique to your project. You may be just in a fit out where it's mobilization and then demolition begins and you won't have a site work activity. Um, that's again, unique to the projects. So once we're here, I'm gonna show you guys how to uh, link an activity now. So let's say mobilization is a one day, whoops. And just side note, under edit, there's always the undo button, which I love. Um, and you can undo pretty much anything just like you would in an Excel document. So come over here, one day for mobilization, let's say 10 days for your uh, grubbing and, and topsoil, stripping topsoil. So now we're gonna point of where we're gonna want to link some of these activities. And what that does, 
you'll see over here in the Gantt chart side, we've established and started inputting. And as we're inputting, those are being carried over to the right-hand side of the. So anything that we've done on the left-hand side in this window generates and populates the same information over here in a date format. So across the top here, you'll see March. Uh, this is broken in a weekly basis. So March and then your days of the week and then your activities. The bar represents how much time we've allotted for that activity. So this is a 10 day activity as it's represented in the Gantt chart here. So as we come down, uh, let's do mobilization. So there's a couple ways to link an activity. Uh, the first way to link it is through your relationships tab. And in there, you'll see a window that's your predecessors and your successors. And as we established back in um, the beginning here, your predecessors and successors is the way you're gonna link and, and how they flow. So there's a couple ways to assign predecessors and successors. Um, the first one is to come under the window, assign, and you'll have a pop-up box that comes here. And this is your project as it stands and how you created it so far. Uh, so what you can do is say you're on the mobilization tab, um, go to your, you, you can flip from activities in this window. So you don't have to keep closing it every time you want to add an activity or a dirty or a predecessor or successor. You'll come into here, you'll come into your grubbing and stripping topsoils. And we know that, um, your mobilization is going to start it. And then right after that, uh, your successor is going to be your grubbing and stripping. So you come up to mobilization, grubbing and stripping. And assign. Oops. So there's two ways to assign. You can assign by hitting assign. And it's not working. Assign, mobilization. There we go. So then next we'll start your uh, grubbing and stripping topsoil. So that's where you're gonna assign your predecessor or your successors. Um, everything in this is, the relationship is called a finish to start. And what that is, is the activity prior to will be finished before you can start your next activity. Now I know typically we don't, have that kind of relationship unless it's uh, uh, unique to the situation. Sometimes we can do a start to start relationship where we can start two activities at the same time. Um, a start to finish activity where uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be complete before you can start the next activity. And a finish to finish, which means both activities have to end at the same exact time. And I'll go over those links uh, on the next chalk talk here. So that's one way to link your activities. Uh, there is three, three ways to do that, let's say. Uh, so that's way number one. From there, um, let's go undo, we'll do the next one here. Or you can highlight the two activities that you wanna link together. And then what you do is right click. And as you look down here, you have link activities. If you click that, that'll create the same activity or same predecessor that we just did and it'll assign a successor to it as well. So it does the same concept, just a little bit of a quicker process, let's say, because if you have several activities that you wanna link at a finish to start, you can highlight all of those activities, go to your link activities and it'll automatically create the relationships from a finish to start, finish to start. So um, it's kind of a quick and simple way to to link several activities at once. And then finally, um, the last way to do it, not the last way, but the last way that I would recommend doing it is if you came over to your Gantt chart view and you highlight it over and you get that arrow. Um, you can see, let's see if I can highlight that, there you go. So you'll see that icon pop up. And what that does is you can hold in the left click and you can drag to where you want that activity to link itself. So then once you do that, you release it and it gives you your successors assigned. 
And so you can continue to do that in that fashion if that's the way you choose, so on and so forth. Once you have all of your predecessors and successors signed through the whole project, so you'll have all of these assigned and you'll have predecessors and successors to everything. At this point, this is where you can come in and you can hit the schedule. Um, the schedule is unique in P6 because it's a manual entry. There's um, another program out there that has an automatic feature where as you're assigning them, it automatically starts scheduling everything for you. P6 doesn't allow that to happen. They want you to consciously go up and schedule the project when you're ready. So up in the top ribbon, you'll see the schedule F9 button here. You click that, this window will pop up. In this window, uh, the most I'm gonna say right now is to make sure that this log to file is clicked because this will give you a snapshot in a, in a Word document or a PDF of the changes you made. So just make sure that's something that's always clicked. Once you're ready, you're comfortable with scheduling, you can go ahead and hit schedule. And what it'll do is you can see down here, it'll schedule the dates out and it'll create the timeline to when you'll start, the duration, and then your final finish. So we're saying we're gonna start on March 10th, we have 15 day duration. This is ending on March 24th. So that's really the down and dirty, kind of just a quick overview of how you wanna start and set up a project, uh, getting logged in, creating it through the wizard, and then going through the process of actually assigning activity names, durations, and then scheduling. Um, I know we kind of went through this quick. I, I, want to make sure we kind of cover and give any time for questions and answers. Um, one other thing I'll show here real quick, just so we can all see it. Since we have durations established for our bid time, um, like I said, my, the easiest way that I found doing it, linking activities is coming here, linking activities, and it creates all of your activity flow. Then when you're ready to schedule, you schedule, and there it goes. And what it'll do is it automatically start to start to finish and it pushes and gives you the dates of when uh, you're starting to finish with the project will be done. Okay, I think that's kind of everything I want to uh, run through here for the first Chalk Talk. Uh, any questions? Josh, can you link between the, um, you just have the worded contract, uh, but you, it showed it being red because we didn't start construction yet. So you, can you link it between there and the construction then with it being different headers? Yeah, so you can, you can link activities between WBSs. So um, let me share my screen here again. I'll show you what you gotta do. So what, what you're asking, say award contract, and then say, we're gonna start with buyout of your site work. And it's the same process. Uh, if you wanna do the finish to start, what you'll do is you'll highlight the two of them. And again, this is just my preferred way of doing it. Link activities. And what that'll do is between WBS is it'll start linking your phases of the construction process. Um, here, schedule. And what that'll do is it'll drive your next phase to start when your previous one is awarded. So that means nothing is starting from buyout as of right now until I get my award, my contract. Mike, is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. Now, um, how, how would that work for like with construction when they're spackling, we usually try to bring the painter in two or three days before they're done spackling, is that possible? Would you be able to link it, have it minus days? Yep, yep. Um, so that's something we'll get into on the next one, but what okay. we do, okay. I, I could show you real quick, it, and, and what it is, it's called a lag. Um, so there's two ways to do it. You can start with a lag, and what that does is it says, okay, this, pro, this activity can start, my next activity can lag in, let's say negative 10 days, and what it'll do is it'll shift that back 
and it'll start it like five days into drywall. So then once your drywall starts for five days, even though that full duration for the drywall may be 20 days, within five days, you can start bringing in your tapers and, 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 and start that process as they're going on. So you can, you can lag them back and forth. Um, the other item, not to get too deep into it, is called a, um, the, let's see here, I'm drawing a blank on it. status there we go constraints uh, and what the constraint will do is say you can't start an activity or you may want to start on a certain date for the next activity and it'll cause the schedule to have a hard start date for the next activity and by putting restraint on it it kind of applies it to the critical path at that point and if you miss that hard start it'll start affecting your flow and it'll start affecting your overall uh, project duration. So I don't, I don't recommend constraints at this point. We'll work with lags and kind of um, make that process work that way. Okay. Great question. And I know I, I, I went through this quick. I just kind of trying to keep everyone's attention, but Certainly, if, if you get in the process and you have any questions, certainly uh, feel free to call me. I, I'm available. We can walk through. We can get on a Zoom and uh, we can go through the process and where you get stuck or if there's something small I can help out with. We can do that. 